guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a French classic, which is called creme patisserie. You may have heard it, you may not have, but it's actually what's filled in so many French desserts, such as profiteroles and choux buns, or gâteaux such as the Frasier cake, all sorts of things, and especially actually in eclairs too. It's that delicious, creamy substance that is quite like a thick custard. Anyway, uh, people are scared of making it because they think it's really complicated, but it's not so bad. And the best part is that you actually use egg yolks. Now for me, because I make so many meringues and macaroons, I always have egg yolk left over. So I actually always make this for when I'm making a dessert for dinner or something. So for creme patisserie, we need 300 ml of milk, so this can be whole milk or half fat milk, just not completely skimmed. 50 grams of caster sugar. 75 grams of egg yolk. And then in here we've got 20 grams of plain flour and 20 grams of corn flour. And as flavoring, we have a fresh vanilla pot. So I've got a saucepan here and on a low to medium heat, I'll put the milk on to warm. So into the milk goes the vanilla pod. Now what you want to do is actually scrape out the seeds and to do that you cut this in half, long ways like this, and then use the back of the knife to scrape out the seeds. Out come this amazing collection of tiny black vanilla pod seeds and that goes straight into the milk. Do that with the other half of the vanilla pod. And to enhance the vanilla flavour even more, I'm going to add the actual vanilla pod to it. So I'm going to cut this in half all the way, and then in half again. And just pop the actual pod into the saucepan. I'm going to leave that to heat until it's steaming. Now in the meantime, into a bowl, I'm going to put the egg yolk and the sugar. So I'll do the egg yolk first, and then the caster sugar. Caster sugar actually burns egg yolk because of, I don't actually know why, but maybe the acidity or something. So if the caster sugar's left on the egg yolk, actually white like gobules form. So have the little whisk at the ready, pour the caster sugar in, and mix straight away. And you're aiming to get this really light and pale, so it takes a good whisking. Who needs the gin when you've got egg yolks? <laughs> As you can see, the egg yolk is now really lightened up. And into this goes the flowers. Now I actually sift the flowers in because you want it as fine as possible. So I've got both flowers in here, and that just goes straight in like that. And then mix that through. So the flowers mixed in, you've got this lovely thick texture now. The milk has come to a steam, and I'm just going to pour half the milk into here. Now the reason why I don't go in with the egg yolk mix into here is because I don't want to get scrambled eggs. So this is called tempering the egg yolk. And this basically means that you're bringing the egg yolk up to temperature before you put it into the pan. Because if it goes straight in, it will just seize up and you get blobs of egg, which no one really wants. Mix the milk through. And now you can put this straight into the saucepan. And then you need to continuously stir it. Now what's gonna happen is because the flour and the corn flour is inside, it's gonna really, really thicken up. So when you're stirring, just make sure that you're touching and scraping the bottom of the pan because you don't wanna get anything to get caught. And this takes about three to five minutes. Also, just going to prepare myself with a tray because that's where we're going to transfer it afterwards. So I can already see it thickening up slightly. So 
plaster and it's starting to look a little lumpy. So an actual trick is to take it off the heat and give it a stir. So I'm going to put it back onto the heat, keep stirring until the mixture starts to boil. Now when it boils, you'll see bubbles try to escape from the surface. You can see it's like really thickened up already. It's nearly there. So the bubbles started to appear, which means it's fully cooked through. And now I'm just going to transfer it straight onto a tray. And I put it onto a tray rather than a bowl so it can cool down quicker. See how weird does that look? I can't believe that started off with just some milk and egg yolk. It's like a really weird jelly-like texture. But don't get put off just yet. I'm just going to even it out like this. And then I'm going to get some cling film and just cover the top of it because this prevents it from forming a skin. And now I'm just going to leave that to cool down until it's completely at room temperature. So the creme patisserie has completely cooled down to room temperature and it's almost like solidified slightly. It's kind of got this weird like jelly consistency. Um, I just find it the strangest thing. <laughs> so I'm gonna peel back the cling film and as you can see, nothing's left on it. Well, nearly nothing. And yeah, it's kind of solidified completely. It's basically a thick custard. So what I'm going to do is take out those pieces of vanilla pod, those large bits that we kept in there, to scrape off the excess creme patisserie. So now this needs knocking back. Basically, it's kind of clumpy right now and you need to whisk it back up again so it's a smooth, luxurious kind of consistency and it's really delicious to eat. If you eat this now, yeah, it's a bit lumpy, it's not very nice. So I've got a stand mixer here and I'm just going to scoop this into the bowl and it's got a whisk attachment. So you can see the texture more now, it's like really jellified. I'm just going to put the whole lot into the bowl. And this just needs a good whisking for about a minute to knock back all those lumps to make it really smooth. So that's had a good knocking back. And yeah, as you can see, it's turned into this lovely cream-like consistency. So this is what creme patisserie is. It's a thickened custard. Now, that can get piped directly into, for example, shoe buns for profiteroles or eclairs. Now, this can be turned into three different types of, I suppose, derivatives of creme patisserie. So if you add whipped cream, it becomes creme diplomat, which I suppose is good for things like fresh fruit tarts, which I'm actually about to make, but I'm gonna keep it as how the creme patisserie is right now. If you add butter, it turns into creme mousseline, which is what I fill the Frasier cake with. So I don't know if you've seen on my Instagram, there's strawberries around the outside of cakes that I do. Uh, that's a Frasier cake and it's held together with creme mousseline. And if you're feeling extra adventurous, you can add Italian meringue and it's just absolutely delicious. I'd probably fill a tart with that and just, or just spoon it because it's so good. But I'm gonna leave it like this. And I've got a piping bag here. It's just a plain piping bag because I'm going to fill some tart cases that I've pre-made. So I'm just gonna pour all the creme patisserie into the bag and it's ready to use. So I've pre-made three sweet pastry tart cases. Now if you wanna see how I make my sweet pastry, head over to this I button and click to see my pastry recipes and give them a go. Now I think sweet pastry goes really nicely with creme patisserie because creme patisserie isn't actually so sweet. So you get the nice sweetness from the tarts. And I'm also going to top it off with some fresh fruit and some little edible flowers too. So I find it easier to fill tarts when they're still in the tin. So I'll leave them in the tin for now and just fill up the tart case with the creme patisserie. So I'm gonna go in with some fresh raspberries I've got here. And I've also got some lovely large fresh blueberries 
when I use blueberries, I just make sure that they're facing the right way up. I'm just going to finish them off with these beautiful, delicate, edible flowers. You don't just have to use edible flowers, you can use little mint leaves, you can use any berry you want. I'm just showing you one example of how to use cream patisserie, but it's really, really versatile. And so now they're filled, I can now take them out the tart case. So there you have it, my creme patisserie recipe, which I've also filled some delicious fresh fruit tarts. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel and head over to see all the other videos that I've made. And also, if you make anything that I've taught you or that any videos that you've watched don't forget to tag me at georgia's case because i'd love to see them hope you've enjoyed it and see you next time